Well, thank you so much for your company this morning. The Bullford Kiwi is an intriguing book about a 130 metre tall kiwi which was carved into a hill in southern England by New Zealand troops waiting to go home at the end of the First World War. Author Colleen Brown decided this little known story should be told and she joins us now. Welcome, Colleen. Oh, thank yes, you. Welcome, thank Colleen. you very much. Uh, firstly, let's talk about your history, but you're not actually a military historian. No. You're, you're a local body politician. <laughs> yes, I am. I am. Yes, yes, I am. And um, a lecturer by background, teacher. So how did this come oh, about then? Well, um, in our house at home, we have a group of photographs of older members of the family. And uh, somebody in the past had given me this little photograph of my great-grandparents with my great-uncle Bertie, who went off to war and didn't come home. And there's all this family mythology about what happened. And my husband and I were going to England, and I decided let's do a bit more digging about where Uncle Bertie is, if he's buried there. <clears throat> and so I found him buried in a little grave at Tid, um, Tidworth, which is a large British military base. And I, um, but I kept on looking at where this was, and it's associated with Bullford, and this Bullford Kiwi kept on popping up. And I thought, I know nothing about this. No. Well, what is this? <laughs> no, I've never heard anything about the Bullford Kiwi no. either. Do you think as, you know, uh, this generation sort of growing up in New Zealand schools have been taught enough about World War history? Because I feel like I haven't. Yeah. Well, maybe I just wasn't paying attention. But no, I think we know a lot about Gallipoli. True. And and we have, a, and, and quite rightly so, but I think there's other stories there that we don't know. So this this is really based at Sling Camp where 100,000 men from New Zealand went through this camp. Right. Mm. And it... You know, what and was know Bertie part of that? And Bertie was part and of so that. And you found wow. him when you went I found to... him, and it was very sad. Uh, he went right through the war, and he died of influenza while he was waiting to come home. Oh, that I is know. such a shame. So what is the story? I mean, why did they wait so long? How did it all work? Well, after the war, uh, there were the British workers decided that had enough. There was a huge amount of inflation. There was an opportunity for them to get better working conditions, so they struck. They struck right throughout the country and closed down all the ports. So our men couldn't go home because the only way they could get home was by ship. Wow. Mm. And how did the <coughs> Kiwi on the side of the hill come about? What sparked the inspiration? Well, <coughs> on the front of cover of the book, you've got Brigadier General Stewart. And he is an extraordinary man. He was in his 50s. He'd been right through the front in the trenches in, in France. And he was in charge of Sling Camp. And he decided early in February 1919 with these men hanging around, why don't we stick a Kiwi on this big hill above the camp? And uh, he sent out a request and all the, the answers came back, no, we don't have anyone who can do that. And so in March, uh, a ship that was going to take over a thousand men back to the South Island was cancelled at the last minute and the men rioted for two days. Wow. They did an equivalent 10,000 pounds back then worth of damage. Wow. So they really went ballistic. Mm. And so they got the idea back out, dusted it off and said, come on guys, we're, we're going to do putting this. Putting that kiwi on the rock. <laughs> putting that kiwi on the rock. So what kind of yeah. conditions did they have in the camp? Or where they were well, the camp was built, I understand, for about 4,000 men. And there were 6,000 in there in 1919 waiting to get home. So of course, you know, you take 1,000 out, you put 1,000 more in. So there's a lot of men. We had 50,000 men to get home. Uh, across across Europe, so it was a lot of men to get back to New Zealand. Mm. It would have been a very, I guess, personal and emotional mm. journey for yeah. you. What are some of the stories that stick out for you? Well, finding the records of the men was quite easy because they're all on a database at National Archives, but it was finding the families of each of those men uh, that was extraordinary. So. Uh, I became a detective, and and it was it, it was amazing. So Harry here, who got the men up on the hill, dear old Harry, Harry Clark, I found his family in Wanganui, and they said to me, "Oh yes, we've got diaries. Do you want us to email them to you?" I said, "What? This wow. is amazing." So a lot of the things have never been seen before. Mm. Um, and Percy Blinkhan, he drew drew the uh, kiwi, and. His daughter-in-law is still alive, and she was able to fill me in some details. The Stewart families, you know, got all the memorabilia of of the Brigadier General Stewart. They're what, very proud. What's their feedback back been? Because they must. This must be something quite special for them. Oh, it is. It is. It's very, very special. And on the back cover is Victor Lowe. <clears throat> Victor, it's the only picture we have of Victor Lowe, and he was with the Fifth Tunnelling Company. So he was at Arras, right down underneath, um, in the defence of Arras. And, and he comes from the first Chinese family in New Zealand. 
So he's Chinese, and the Chinese community didn't know, or they knew that he was mm. his military background, but they did not know that he surveyed the Kiwi up on the hill. Right, I'm fascinated, and there's <laughs> obviously lots more you can read about in this book, so go and get it. But just quickly, did the Kiwi last all that time, or did they no. recreate it? Well, oh, during Wolf, World War II, they had to cover it up because the Luftwaffe were using it oh, as actually. a bombing target. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for the Kiwi, drop some bombs. Um, and so when they re-dug it, finally, they re-dug it to a slightly different shape. Um, so I've been up there with my husband measuring up the current Kiwi and we then looked at it with the uh, original. So Otago School of Surveying, they helped and they did a digital uh, comparison. So yes, so today, uh, New Zealand government stepped away from it in 1980, but there's this amazing person in the UK called uh, Danny Fisher and he took his men up there and they restored oh, it. Brilliant. And he's still alive today. That is amazing. awesome. Such yep. an important tribute mm. to all the men involved yep. and a beautiful story. Mm. Um, thank yep. you so much for telling it. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Colleen's book, The Bullford Kiwi, is available mm. at all good bookstores right now.